Good morning everyone, welcome to Our Small Footprint. My name is Nissa, and if you're new here, we are a family of eight who live off-grid in Australia. Uh, I, coming off the back of my last video, which was the Q&A video that I need to do a, like a part two of that I haven't got around to yet, I've taken a couple of days off uh, filming. I've filmed, but I haven't done any editing, voiceovering or anything. Uh, working on a few different bits and pieces. I was designing my squirrel character. I'll put a little uh, thumbnail in of the squirrel that I've been working on here and things like that. Just taking it time out a little bit. I watched a couple of episodes of a TV show which I haven't done in a while and things like that and just contemplating what I wanted to do after all the feedback and the discussions that I got from that video. So I will be doing a part two. Maybe I'll do it on Sunday again. Uh, as my chat video and I'll show you I've got some seedlings started and stuff too so I want to show you those as well the seed structure is working well for the moment we will see how we go because things started out fine in the garden this year and then fell apart so you know we will see but I have some cabbage seedlings sprouting and things like that which is really exciting uh, so I will show you that setup as well. We're going to set up some cracky beds and stuff in there as well, I think, for some lettuce and that over the next little bit while we re-establish and re-figure out what we're going to do with the garden beds for next season's planting and get the, there was the damage that was done from the tree that fell on the structure as well. So we've got a bit of work there to go. So in the meantime, uh, there's still food to be done. So this video, I'm showing you how I canned some mushrooms. Uh, I have canned mushrooms in a few different ways before, but this one was supposed to be a bit of a snack type mushroom canning for Daryl because he's the one who really enjoys mushrooms. So I thought I would film it and bring you along. Now I did the initial canning about a week ago. So we tried them and we opened a jar last night to try, which is why I'm doing this video now and Daryl really enjoyed them. So they worked out really well and I think they're gonna work really well for the purposes that we're looking at using them for. So I wanted to share and show you all how it went and enjoy watching and I will see you on the next video. Thanks guys. So generally speaking, I buy mushrooms. I buy just a couple of punnets of them every time I do the shopping because Daryl's really the only significant fan of the mushrooms, but I do use them in a few things. Like I mince them up to use in my spaghetti uh, for the flavor of it. And I have canned mushroom stock before. I've got a video somewhere with that. So I cooked the mushrooms up in chicken stock and then canned them like that because I can put that in my spaghetti and stuff too. Uh, easy to just pour that extra liquid into any sort of mince dish and add those flavors into risottos, all that sort of stuff. But no one is really a fan of cooked mushrooms in chunks of any sort, uh, except for Daryl. So Daryl will just eat them buttered, like cooked in a bit of butter on toast and things like that. Uh, so I always buy him some to eat fresh, but I would I was looking for a way to make them last a little bit longer as well, uh, make them a little more useful on the shelf. So I saw this recipe for marinated mushrooms and decided to give that a go. Uh, I do dehydrate them at times um, and then I use them powdered uh, for uh, mushroom salt and things like that or just as flavor and Carvic actually likes to eat the dehydrated mushrooms just as a snack. So I do do that occasionally as well but it's just I was just looking for an alternate way to preserve them that they were still edible as mushrooms for Daryl basically. You can can them whole or you can slice them up. I decided to slice them up because I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to use them for, but also because if you're slicing them up, you're going to fit more mushrooms in a jar. So you're going to use less jars overall than if you were to put them in whole. So I liked the idea of doing that. And once the jars are open, it'll last a week or two in the fridge. So it's not like it needs to be eaten straight up as soon as you open the jar. So I decided to put the, to slice them up into little pieces so that I would fit more per jar and have less jars that I would have to can use and can. Uh, somewhere in the middle of this a child asked me to open a jar of pickles so that's what I'm doing there at, at some point opening a jar of uh, pickled cucumbers that I had made for them weeks ago that they were eating as a snack. Now to be able to water bath can mushrooms because normally they're a pressure can thing like when they're in stock and things like that you need to acidify them basically and have a certain ratio of vinegar so the first step of doing canning mushrooms in a water bath canner is that you're going to cook them off in some lemon juice so it's straight lemon juice and you cook them off in a pan 
uh, simmer them until they sort of reduce somewhat. Uh, you want them cooked looking because the aim of this is not only to add that acidity to them but also to get the air and the water and stuff out of the mushrooms as well so that they fill the jars adequately and they don't float so you if you put raw packed mushrooms into a jar by the time you can the jar you'd only have it half full of mushrooms because they're going to lose their air absorb liquid things like that and you'd have half a jar of brine and half a jar of mushrooms so by cooking them off first you're acidifying them with the lemon juice but you're also reducing the mushrooms to a better state for canning purposes uh, so in straight lemon juice that you cook the mushrooms off in and while that's simmering you get the brine ready because you're going to have to heat that as well so again to water bath can mushrooms you're going to need to add acid to it so there needs to be a good amount of vinegar in the brine for that purpose so you're looking at about a 60 40 mix here 60 percent vinegar 40 percent olive oil uh, I used apple cider vinegar you could use whichever vinegar you wanted realistically I like the flavor of apple cider vinegar so that's what I used so I used apple cider vinegar and olive oil in mine you add salt and spices of choice so I used a little bit of dried basil and oregano because that seemed to be what is most regularly selected for these and I'm not eating them so I don't have a whole lot of knowledge on what herbs taste right with mushrooms so I went with what it what it said I would think that any sort of hard herbs would work well uh, your rosemaries and your thymes and things like that basil has a tendency to taste funny when you can it but I think that's only pressure can I don't think that's water bath canning uh, so I gave it a go and Daryl tasted them and said it's fine so but I would imagine that to a degree you could use whatever dried herbs is your preference to eat there hard herbs always stand up better to canning than soft herbs uh, once the mushrooms have reduced that bit and as i said they, they look like they've sucked up some lemon juice they've reduced down a bit and they look slightly corked then you want to strain off the lemon juice and discard it so you just put i just poured it straight into a colander uh, over a bowl so that the mushrooms would just sort of drip dry over the bowl uh, the you don't want to use that liquid for anything uh, I I don't know whether you could I suppose realistically you could use it as your lemon juice in a mayo or something it's going to taste slightly mushroomy so it's gonna have that earthy flavor to it so I suppose there would probably be something you could use it for I didn't think about it at the time and I just discarded it and all the recipes just say to discard it because you're not using it in the canning recipe but you've cooked mushrooms in lemon juice there might be something you could use that for as I said you could use it as the acid in your mayos maybe or the acid in a pasta sauce or I'm not sure but that's a thought for next time uh, then you want to bring the brine up to a hard simmer or a, a boil basically uh, it bring it up to a boil and then turn it down to a simmer you want to keep it hot because you're going to be pouring it hot into your jars so you want to keep it at a simmer until you're ready to pour it over your mushrooms uh, the you by using your brine hot partially it's going to help you pack the jars in a little bit better because again hot liquid in the mushrooms is going to keep the mushrooms smaller but also it's going to require less canning time if the insides of the jar are already hot so you're going to have less issues with the because it's going to get up to temperature quicker like if you're water bath canning it your water is going to boil quicker if you're putting it in hot water hot jars in hot water uh, or whatever else it's going to take less time for the processing if you're starting with hot product which is important when you're using something fragile like a mushroom so then I filled all the jars so I when you filling the jars the you add a few extra bits and pieces now I forgot to turn the camera on for the first part of this so I'm only showing one jar being filled but I had diced up some onion and cut up some garlic because I have elephant garlic so it's really huge so it's, you can use a clove of garlic if you've got small cloves but I've got really big cloves at the moment so I put the equivalent of a clove of garlic in the bottom of the jar and a couple of teaspoons of diced onion a couple of peppercorns and then put the mushrooms in so I packed the mushrooms in fairly well as I said I was looking to use less jars basically I like my jars to be full and to use less jars rather than have half full jars on the shelf obviously you need to have full liquid for uh, uh, safety purposes you have to have the right headspace but f half full of product annoys me a little bit too so I packed the jars in nice and well with the onions and the garlic and the peppercorns in the bottom of the jar once you've got the jar 
packed you pour the hot brine over the jar and then you want to debubble it well because there's lots of little spots that air pockets can be in those mushrooms and adjust the headspace accordingly so when you debubble something like that quite often the liquid level drops down a little bit so you want to top up that liquid level a little bit so that it's at the right spot for processing so you want to clean the rims really well because the brine has an oil base in it so white vinegar clean cloth clean the rims you don't have to worry about like the vinegar is not going to hurt if it gets a bit more into the jars so be generous with it you don't want that oil to affect the seal uh, these are 250 ml food jars here and they have a 63 ml lid opening on these particular ones so i quite like these jars we use them for a lot of things we use them for uh, jams and fruit, pu fruit purees because they're a good size for me to stir through uh, yogurt and things like that but I also use them for our caramelized onion jams and all that sort of stuff so these are we have a lot of these jars these 250 ml jars and the fact that they have 63 ml lids is a good thing because that's a common sort of a size to have for a bunch of different things I like to wash the lids in warm water and then I like to wipe them out with white vinegar as well uh, the normal reasons that I always state the house has lots of dust and dirt and things get grubby around so I like to wipe them out with the white vinegar just to make sure that there's nothing on those lids that is going to interfere with the seal on the jars because we want these to seal we've gone to all this effort it sucks if they don't end up sealing so I used the steam canner for these so it's a water bath method you can use a steam canner water bath canner steam canner for me uses less water less time and I knew that I would have not enough jars that it would be an issue uh, the only time I don't use the steam canner is Posada jars and number 27s and Fowlers do not fit in a steam canner they are too tall but apparently you can use your pressure canner as a steam canner and I'm going to look that up because that would be awesome for being able to use the taller jars like my cordials and my tomato products and stuff and be able to steam can them in a pot now I have to go to the dark green line in the steam canner because of my altitude and I can for uh, 25 minutes. It's 20 minutes for under a thousand feet, 25 minutes for a thousand to three thousand feet. I'm or 300 meters above. I'm 380 meters altitude so I have to can that extra five minutes. So 25 minutes at the dark green line on the steam canner for me or at a rolling boil if I was doing them in a water bath canning situation sort of thing. Uh, we left them a week because I they have to mellow they're a, they're a pickle uh, it's they're not because they have the oil they're marinated but they're similar to a pickle in that there is a high proportion of vinegar in the jars so if you've got that kind of quantity of vinegar then you are going to want to let it mellow a little bit you're going to want to let it sit a little bit any sort of a pickle you normally let mellow for at least a week up to you know four weeks because you want that that uh, tart the sour of the vinegar just to mellow a little bit so uh, I've left that it's been a week since we canned these ones and then I opened a jar for dinner tonight because we were making pizzas so I thought that that would be a good use for these was to be able to put them on pizza because we don't always have mushrooms suitable to put on a pizza uh, you can freeze pieces of mushroom but they go really slimy and gross so it's not real pleasant uh, and I could rehydrate some mushroom and put it on there but pizza is only cooked for a brief period of time and you're adding moisture and so generally speaking unless I have them fresh we don't put mushroom on pizza so what I did was I opened a jar to try it on pizza so I made Daryl's pizza he has anchovies and that was homemade pizza sauce it's homemade pizza dough it's corn salami we had some teriyaki chicken that was left over from lunch on there as well uh, and some bacon and and the mushrooms on there and we cooked that up he did try eating the mushrooms straight out of the jar and was quite happy with them they're fairly mild he said so I think you could probably bump up some of the seasonings if that's what you were looking for depending on what you're eating them but he was happy to just sit there he ate like half a jar just with a fork so I'm sure he will eat them in a in a variety of things it's a good mild sort of a snack so sometimes when we pickle things um, he eats a couple of spoonfuls and then goes you know that's sort of all I'd eat of it I wouldn't sit there and eat very more so very much more so I think the marinated will work well I am going to try doing a similar sort of thing with some of my garlic I will pickle some of the garlic for long-term use 
in cooking but I wouldn't mind trying marinating some as well uh, and then I will make the garlic conserva that I made last time which is basically like a caramelized garlic in a jar it's pressure canned it's very nice so I'm gonna make that in the next few days as well because I ordered some bulk garlic so I've got that to work with and I'm not sure if I will plant much this year in the way of garlic because each year I seem to waste a lot of money buying the garlic and planting it and get nothing from it whereas I kind of maybe I should just process the garlic that I buy rather than trying to plant it but we'll see so I will make the garlic conserva sometime as well and I'll bring you along for that it is delicious we have to make that in the really small uh, four ounce jars because once we open a jar we tend to just eat the whole thing and that's an expensive thing to be eating in that sort of quantity so the wind has just come up because it's supposed to storm today so I don't know how that's going to be affecting the sound so I should probably go there's supposed to be a storm this afternoon so we need to go and get all the animals sorted before it starts raining and Daryl was just up on the roof checking the gutters and things like that so we've got that sorted as well uh, I've got been filming all the food for what we eat in a week so I'll have that out uh, later in the week and then I'll do my chat on Sunday and then I will keep you updated on what else is going to happen how I'll sort it out maybe Sunday we'll have another chat about it and decide what's going on uh, but the you just I sort of just need a little bit of downtime after the daily videos uh, but I also know that it is detrimental to the YouTube algorithm to have a break so you know it's a bit of a one of you know deciding which way is the best way to go with that but thank you for joining me again today and the marinade mushrooms got a big thumbs up from Daryl so that was definitely worthwhile and if I can get them really cheap again I will make a whole lot to go on the shelf because uh, they're not cheap very often uh, so you know if I can get a, a good deal on them it was a very simple process uh, pickling always sort of is and cooking them down didn't take much time at all so uh, I'll definitely do them again if we can get some mushrooms cheap I will I have tried growing mushrooms before I've bought some plugs and I've bought some box kits and all that sort of thing and I haven't had much success I think our weather is a little bit for it but if anyone has any tips for growing mushrooms then let me know because I wouldn't mind trying to grow some different varieties that are too expensive for me to buy like the oyster mushrooms and stuff and I see all the kits but the kits aren't inexpensive either and the ones that we have bought we haven't had much luck with so but anyway I've just squirreled again haven't I so you know uh, that's what some of you are around here for apparently <laughs> so thank you and I will see you on the next video bye guys